Okay, let's go ahead and find the quotient between negative four and eight. That is the question for this particular video. Of course, I'm gonna answer it, but I'm gonna give you an opportunity to give me your answer. Put into the comment section, the quotient of uh, negative four and eight is equal to what? Well, it seems pretty simple, uh, and there's only a couple different ways we can kind of manipulate this problem. But here's the deal. A lot of people are gonna get this wrong because of two things. One, they're just not quite sure what this word means. They've heard the quotient before. They're, they're saying to themselves, I think it has to do with maybe this, that, or the other thing. So this is the first reason. If you're not sure exactly what the quotient is, well, then it's going to be almost impossible to answer this question 100% uh, confidently. And then the second thing is anytime students are dealing with positive and negative numbers, uh, they can get in trouble. But uh, let's just go ahead and see how well you remember what the quotient is. And uh, you don't even need a calculator. Go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. But of course, I'm going to cover all of this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And I'm telling you right now, if you're failing math or struggling, uh, having a tough time in mathematics, it doesn't have to be that way. So you need basically two things to get uh, on track uh, and do well in mathematics. The first is you're going to have to work harder. Okay, so even though if you're you know currently working hard, you're going to have to actually work even harder. So that's the first thing. But if you're willing to do the work, the second thing you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, comprehensive, and that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. It will help you out big time. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of test with a math section, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, et cetera, I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, definitely check out my homeschool uh, math courses for middle and high school mathematics. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to help me out by liking it and subscribing. That would be much appreciated. Okay, so let's get into the quotient and this particular problem. And what are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about number operations. So let's take two numbers like two and let's say seven. So what can we do between these two numbers? I mean, if we have two or more numbers, we want to do something in mathematics, you know, with them, right? Well, these things that we want to do or the way we can manipulate numbers in math, which is uh, basically almost the essence of math, is a number operation. So let's say I go, well, two and seven, I can add these numbers up. So this addition sign right here is a mathematical operator, okay? It is a number operation. So if we have addition, we have subtraction, we have multiplication, we have division, and there's even other operations that we can perform. But along with these mathematical operators, we have kind of special words that go with them. So the result of adding numbers is called the what? The sum. When we subtract numbers, we're actually finding the difference. When we multiply two or more numbers together, we are finding the product. And then division has to, uh, has to do with something with this word right here, quotient. Okay, so let's t uh, go ahead and actually define what the quotient is now. So the quotient of x and y, some number x and another number y, is equal to x divided by y, okay? And you could write that this way, x divided by y, and there you go, okay? So the quotient is the result of division, okay? But it has a very specific meaning when you have a kind of written uh, English verbal translation to uh, the quotient. So if I'm, uh, if I'm asking you to find the quotient of two numbers, this it has a very specific order. X comes first right here, X divided by Y. So this second number is what you're dividing by, but it's also equal to this. Okay, so knowing that, let's go ahead and take a look at our actual problem. And I'll leave the definition of the quotient up there. So the quotient of X and Y is X divided by Y or X divided by Y that way. So the quotient of negative four and eight is equal to what? Well, I purposely didn't write it down because I want you to go ahead and interpret the definition of the quotient. So some of you are saying, okay, well, let me just kind of look at this real quick. Is it negative four over eight? Or maybe is it eight divided by negative four? Okay, which one is it? Okay, is it negative four 
divided by 8 or is it 8 divided by negative 4? So I would suspect that most of you out there um, saw the word quotient in, in your kind of your brain, you were thinking, oh, it has something to do with division. Is it the result of doing division? Yes, that is correct. But which is the order of the numbers? Okay, which which number is the numerator? Which number is the denominator? Well, again, we need our very specific definition of the quotient. Okay, so again, the quotient of x and y, x is the numerator, okay, and it's being divided by y. All right, so now, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and clarify all these different possibilities. Obviously, one of these is um, the correct answer, or actually two of these. But let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer now. Okay, so the quotient of x and y, all right, to be redundant, it's x divided by y, but it's probably easier to see it this way, x divided by y. So the quotient of negative 4, this is our numerator. Okay, so we're going to put that right here. So x, okay, this x is the first x right here, or our numerator. So we're, I'm going to write this as a fraction. So this is going to be negative 4 divided by the second number, okay, which is y. All right, so there's y, and our second number here is 8. So the, uh, what we got to do now is figure out the quotient of negative 4 and 8 is negative 4 divided by 8. Okay, now there's another way of writing that. We could write this as negative 4 divided by 8 or negative 4 divided by 8. And you can see um, what we're left with is an actual uh, fraction. Now we could just reduce this fraction down to negative 1 half or negative 0.5. But I can tell you right now, a lot of uh, students out there or a lot of people doing this would have said, well, this is 8 divided by negative 4. So they would have gotten like negative 2. Or uh, they would have maybe been confused with their rules of positive and negative numbers and maybe answered two or maybe a positive one half as well. I can show you all those answers were out there. So if you answered any, uh, you know, with any of those wrong answers, you're not alone. Okay. Again, basic things like the quotient, uh, you know, they're easy to make a mistake because this is like basic number operations. You know, you're learning how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and all these words. Oh, I know what the sum is. I know what the difference is and the product. But the quotient tends to confuse a lot of students. Again, there's very specific um, definitions to these words. And this foundational math is very, very important. But if you, in fact, got this problem correct, I don't want to just leave without giving you a nice, lovely, happy face and A+. Plus. I'll give you 120% for today's work and multiple stars so you can have extra special day. So that's pretty good if you actually got the quotient. But I would say out of all these um, uh, terms, number operations, the quotient seems to confuse a lot of people and the difference as well. Matter of fact, I just posted a... Uh, video yesterday on the difference. I don't know if you've had a chance to check that out, but check that video out as well if you want to challenge your ability uh, in terms of understanding what the difference is. And of course, that has to do with subtraction. All right, so hopefully this uh, you know is a good little basic review for you. If you need to review basic foundational math, I actually have a math foundations course. You can find that at my math help program. So that covers basic mathematical operations, place values, decimals, Venn diagrams, fractions, all that kind of good stuff. That's an excellent little mini course. But if you need something beyond that, uh, probably my next level course up from that would be pre-algebra. So those are some additional kind of follow-on uh, help. But this stuff right here, basic number operations, you're saying, well, that's only in elementary school or basic math. Not at all. Okay, this carries over in algebra and beyond. So you've got to know these basic definitions. And hopefully this video was useful. And if that's the case, again, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.